Good evening, I'm Allison Stewart. Keith has the night off. To quote the president on the state of the war, quote, the confused nature of this conflict cannot mask the fact that it is the new face of an old enemy. The contest is part of a wider pattern of aggressive purposes. Those words coming from President Lyndon Johnson, another Texan from another party about another war, Vietnam, in April of 1965. But in our fifth story in the countdown, the current president, George W. Bush, expressed many of the same sentiments today in a speech linking the Iraq war to the conflict in Vietnam. It all comes full circle. Today in Kansas City, before the hottest ticket around this week, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Convention. Mr. Bush suggested friendly Iraqis could lose their lives if the U.S. pulls out, just as he says the Vietnamese were executed a generation ago. One unmistakable legacy of Vietnam is that the price of America's withdrawal was paid by millions of innocent citizens whose agonies would add to our vocabulary new terms like boat people, re-education camps, and killing fields. With today's appearance in Missouri, it seems the president's years of rejecting any Vietnam-Iraq comparisons are over. How do you answer the Vietnam comparison? Yeah. Uh, I think the analogy is false. Uh, I also happen to think that analogy is, uh, sends the wrong message to our troops and sends the wrong message to the enemy. Look, this is hard work. That was from April of 2004. At the end of today's Bush speech, more war, hard work. Mr. Bush had to do some cheerleading. In response to criticism from U.S. politicians, Iraqi Prime Minister Maliki lashed out this morning, saying that no one has the right to impose timetables on his government and that his country, quote, can find friends elsewhere. The president attempted to undo the damage by having appeared to distance himself from the Iraqi leader. Prime Minister Maliki is a good guy, a good man with a difficult job and I support him. And it's not up to the politicians in Washington, D.C. to say whether he will remain in his position. Time now to call on our own Craig Crawford, columnist for the Congressional Quarterly. Nice to see you, Craig. Nice to see you, Allison. Former Nixon advisor David Gergen said today by invoking Vietnam, Mr. Bush opened the door to a really obvious question. Gergen said that historians would ask, quote, well, if you've learned so much from history, Mr. President, how did you ever get us involved in another quagmire, end quote. So what does Mr. Bush gain from this comparison? I, I can't even begin to imagine, Allison. I mean, speaking as one who's been yelled at by this White House uh, for making a, a much milder comparison to Vietnam a couple years ago, uh, it's incredulous to, to me. But I'll, I'll tease out one political purpose I do see in it, uh, which is uh, they are preparing at the White House for a big battle, big showdown on Capitol Hill next month over war funding and the surge. And they are sending talking points uh, messages out out there to the conservatives who still support the president in the war and radio talk shows and elsewhere uh, and this is an argument they're putting out there a lot of conservatives there's a lot of revisionism uh, among conservatives about Vietnam that uh, we could have won it if we'd stayed they think uh, and it's only caused liberals in the media uh, you know, snookered the country into being against the war this is a, a popular theory of, of, of a school of thought among conservatives out there and he's touching on that and giving them some fodder that they might use in this coming debate on Capitol Hill. There's another comparison that leads to a question. Why would the president point out that Iraqi civilians could be harmed if U.S. troops withdraw, considering the thousands upon thousands who have already been killed in this conflict? And, of course, there's always the argument that uh, these are the folks, this president and his team, uh, who predicted all sorts of things about the, uh, the response to the invasion that were wrong. Uh, uh, why are we to suddenly believe them uh, that they're right on predicting what would happen if we would leave? But, but that is that void left behind is going to be a, a, a tough challenge for Democrats to come up with their alternative. How would they deal with that problem? After all, there is a one big difference between Iraq and, and Vietnam. Is in, at least in Vietnam, we did not have a national uh, resource uh, like oil uh, at stake in Vietnam. Uh, so in some ways, Iraq, I suppose, is even a bigger uh, strategic uh, site uh, and problem for the United States than Vietnam was. Mr. Bush painted a withdrawal today in terms of black and white. Either we stay at the current troop levels or we leave completely. Why is it to his advantage to paint it as black or white rather than go for the gray and maybe a partial pullback, which some people are advocating? 
Uh, this president's not fond of the gray areas uh, any more than he is about uh, admitting mistakes or saying he was sorry. Uh, he's very John Wayne in that way. And that is one way he has sustained a lot of support, uh, enough support uh, to get his way through what is now going to be next month the fifth wave of voting uh, since the Democrats took control of Congress over the war. And they are preparing for that and, and getting those talking points and messages and slogans uh, uh, out there as, as they uh, try to convince enough voters, uh, particularly the conservatives uh, who will be in, in Republican-held districts, a lot of House Republicans with uh, a lot of conservative voters are holding with the president. If the president can keep them uh, with these kinds of arguments, uh, he can probably uh, fight a veto effort on, on cap. I mean, he can sustain a veto on Capitol Hill. And uh, uh, right now, I got to say, I think he still has those votes. I, I don't think the Democrats are going to get the votes to override his vetoes, and he'll come out of this debate next next month with the war pretty much intact uh, in his hands. Now, before I let you go, we got to talk about the dust up with Prime Minister al-Maliki. Did President Bush do enough today to put out that fire? Here's something else I'm beginning to wonder about, Allison, is if a change in government there is something the president and his team might welcome, uh, because uh, anything that is a new beginning, uh, whether it's uh, hiring a new general or uh, getting a new strategy, um, and with all this talk about the, the government there not being effective, uh, something I suspect we may see is an effort to get a new team uh, in the government there and say, here's another reason to keep the war going. Now we've got new people who are really going to figure things out. To be continued, Craig Crawford of MSNBC, Congressional Quarterly. Have a great night, Craig. Good to be here.